Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, got a fair amount done since last time. I got the uh, peahen's head, and most of her crest is complete. And uh, I am now filling in some more wing feathers. So the colors are all kind of going that way because of the way the peacock is standing, so I am following that. And uh, I did do 33 stitches already this morning, so not starting quite at zero. But I also don't have a ton already done. So we'll see what we get to. I apologize in advance if I don't talk as much. I have a little bit of a sore throat this morning. Hopefully it's not going to turn into anything. <laughs> Yeah, it is another gloomy, overcast day. I'm going to do this one as well. So I say my method now is to be connected on at least one side with the stitch I do and try not to close in completely on all four, any unstitched squares. So I find things are still neat and at least for me I find it organized and uh, but it goes a little bit faster because that means there's times when I don't have to switch colors quite as often I can continue stitching with the same color for a little longer so I do like that yeah because I found when I kind of tried to force my work to go diagonal and my diagonals were going this way then there was a lot of stopping and starting which slowed the whole process down and while it's not a race i i do if something i can do to make things a little bit faster then i will do that because yeah there's so many beautiful patterns i want to make and never enough time <laughs> And they just keep releasing more, right? Yeah. The collection is never complete because they keep coming up with new ones that I just can't say no to. Although I do try to limit myself to buying stuff that I can feasibly see myself actually doing. Oh boy, that was really... I must have uh, pulled it very uneven there. <laughs> That's really off. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, when I went grocery shopping this weekend, because I usually go on Sundays, uh, kiddo took me, He, um, because uh, he was running low on gas anyway, for the moment we're covering his gas, so yeah, I said, well, it doesn't make sense then to take my car, we'll just take your Jeep and get gas as part of running errands, so yeah, and he didn't stall it once. It's a little jumpy sometimes as he's still getting used to driving the standard, but yeah, it's getting better. I said, yeah, give it a few months. You'll be as smooth at it as dad is. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, I, I personally would not want to do so much extra work. And my husband said, well, become second nature. I said, maybe for you, but I don't know. I've had my license for 10 years now, just about, and uh, I still mentally am talking myself through driving, so, yeah. <laughs> I can't seem to go on autopilot, so <laughs> I have to be very deliberately thinking about what I'm doing and what I'm going to do next, so... Well, that was something they recommended. It was in um, my uh, husband and son watched all of Canada's Worst Driver, and uh, they quite enjoyed that show. And that was what they would recommend you do, is talk yourself even out loud through it if you have to. And there was one who she went from being, yeah, she was one of the finalists, so one of the worst drivers, because they 
you know, would slowly graduate people as they got better until they were left with, I think, it was three, the three worst from that season, and they would have to do an hour-long road test to see if they'd learned, you know, well with their lessons. And uh, there was one who, yeah, so she was in the top three, and uh, she went through her hour-long road test, and she didn't make a single mistake. And uh, it was because she was, she was uh, saying it the whole time, what she was going to do, what she needed to watch out for. So, because, yeah, she said it was wild. She said that her mind was blown when someone told her that you're supposed to be, when you're driving, your attention is supposed to be on your driving because she would be looking at things on her phone and texting and stuff and it's like uh yeah lady <laughs> you should be your your attention should be on your driving like oh my goodness you know when they say operating heavy machinery they don't just mean like excavator you know or log loader or you know whatever they mean also a car is heavy machinery right it's, you know a few tons of metal you're driving around yeah it's funny because, yeah, when they say heavy machinery, my my brain would always think excavator or, like, you know, power drill or something, like, you know, drill press or something. And it's like, yeah, those are heavy machinery, but, yes, a car also counts. Ooh. But, yeah, there was one guy. Oh, my gosh, he did terrible. He did a U-turn right around the pole holding the sign that said no U-turn, you know, that kind of thing. And his biggest problem was road rage, like... He actually had his arm in a cast from an accident that he had caused, caused um, during the show because of that. And, uh, yeah, like, he actually had the skills, I think, if he could just learn to, you know, to keep himself calm and under control. I think he could have been. But at the end, they wouldn't even graduate him. Yeah. Like they said, we, we don't feel comfortable returning your license to you. At this point, we don't think you've learned enough to be safe. And, uh, yeah, they recommended, like, that he go um, and have to go back to driving school and retake his test. Like, they can't force him to legally. It's just a show. They're not, like, an authority. But, yeah, they said that was their recommendation. That, And they had some seasons that if nobody had improved enough, they didn't graduate anyone that week. Yeah. So it wasn't always a week, sometimes a person a week, sometimes they would graduate more than one person if they felt they had sufficiently learned to be a safe driver. And uh, yeah, sometimes if they felt nobody had improved enough to be, to be safe on the road, they kept them another week. So yeah. Some of the challenges were just wild. They had one, they built this like giant X-shaped enclosure that uh, the car, they had to move it, maneuver around inside it. Yeah. And stuff like that. They had one, they put a big tub of water on top of the car and you had to drive without spilling it, which means you had to be very, very, you know, smooth and steady and slow with your accelerations and decelerations, right? Yeah. It doesn't take much for it to just slosh right over. They had um, them practicing how to back up a trailer and stuff because, yeah, that is trickier because, of course, it's got a it's got a fulcrum, right? So the car goes one way and the the trailer goes another way. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember there was one she just backed up straight and didn't look, and then. She was shocked that the, the trailer had gone to the side. It's like, yeah, that's the problem, is it needs to be constantly adjusted. They are tricky. So yeah, I'm just kind of working all along this. And there's sort of a natural break point that will form here. And then at that point, I will probably move up. Because yeah, these feathers are almost going to start forming like overlapping scales. So I will be following those like I did last time when I was working on the tail. That was sort of, yeah, last um, last pass when I got to the tail, that's sort of when I abandoned my diagonal stitching and I am now fully on this new color flow method that has grown out of it. Yeah. Yeah, there's people talking about different 
methods in it's like yeah don't be afraid to experiment try all sorts of different stuff incorporate different ways from different people there's no rules yeah So yeah, I did decide when I moved my frame that I'm going to build up mostly from the bottom up. That's just the way the colors are going across this piece. And so I'm just going to follow them, at least for this section anyway. be a bit till I get to that color again so I am just going to unthread it for a while okay just gonna take a look if I do some other colors first I think I can do a bunch in a row which I like to do I can do all or most of one color in a row when I do that. So sometimes that means doing other colors around it first. Yeah, like I said, it is shaping up to be a rainy summer this, uh, this year. There's not been much sun. Yeah, they had a car show uh, a couple weekends ago, and it was sunny for that and not too hot. That was nice, but uh, yeah, it's been pretty lousy after that. Yeah, there was one we saw somebody had outfitted their van to look like the one from the Toy Story. And they even had um, the little aliens hanging from the, the uh, rear view mirror. The claw. <laughs> yeah, he has been chosen. It was funny because um, somebody said they, they showed they did that with um, their friends as a group uh, costume for Halloween. One person was the claw. And then, yeah, three other people were dressed up as the little aliens. <laughs> there was one that um, somebody, I think it was with their twin toddlers, they, um, they did the slinky dog. So one kid got to be uh, the front and one got to be the back, which was pretty darn cute. <laughs> Over the coming sessions, there's going to be lots of different vibrant colors showing up. That's where I'm going to be into the tail. There's still a bit more of the pale part of the wing left, yeah, but not a lot. Yeah, the feathers are coming in soon. Yeah, there's just like this little bit here, if I think of the pale part of the wing, maybe a little bit more, and then... It will be into the, the tail feathers again. My favorite part. Okay, yes, so I did all of that so that I can do a whole bunch of this color at once.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way up, crossing as I go, up along this edge, and then park it and fill in and carry it back down as I fill in the other colors below it. So other people may choose to sort of go back and forth if they like it. Again, that is totally up to you if that is what you wish to do. Or it could even do two separate threads if you wanted, that sort of thing. Okay, so. So yes, sometimes I cross as I go and sometimes I don't. Usually if I'm doing a skinny little sort of run along the edge, then I will cross as I go. If I'm doing sort of a bigger block than I tend to do, the bottom legs then cross them in rows. Like I often say, it depends where I want my thread to end up. And this time I want my thread to end up at the top. So that is why I'm crossing as I go here. I think that went over just a little bit. The leg of that stitch looked a little bit long. It could have been just because it was over the grid line. I wanted to make sure. So yeah, I guess I can say the crest feathers all look like they're totally done, actually. Yeah, because the colors have changed there, so. Oh, oh, silly me. It was in move mode, and double tap in move mode means it selects or deselects depending on yeah my mistake and then let's see yeah so these are going to kind of cross over each other so do some and then switch to the other back and forth a bit because i don't like to leave gaps so It started raining again. It's been kind of on and off today. At least it's not majorly windy like it was last time it was filming. Holy cow. <laughs> that was wild. Yeah. I said it like blew all the blossoms off of our apple trees. So I said, I hope they've been pollinated already. <laughs> or we won't get much fruit. Mm. Although we got a ton last year. Yeah. Almost 100 liters of juice was just wild and that was concentrate too yeah I I can it as concentrate and then you add water later so 
takes up less space and then it's nice if you want to add um, carbonation to it. Yeah, so we have a soda stream, so we like to add carbonated water and make sparkling apple juice. There's a crow on my roof again. Yeah, sometimes you can hear him walking around. <laughs> Goodness. Hope it's not a woodpecker. <laughs> Also going to do that one. As long as it is right against the edge. Actually, I'm going to do. Let's take a look. I think I've missed something here. Oh yeah, I did too. Yeah, oh, I did only one of those stitches, silly me. Okay. All right, what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna just leave that part there for a second. Yeah, when I was carrying that one up, I must have missed one. I miscounted. Okay, no problem. Sometimes that happens. Did you see me do it? <laughs> uh, well, that can be fixed. Lots of little short bits. I often say I'd rather miss a stitch than put a stitch where there isn't supposed to be one because that's much harder to undo. Yeah. Easier to just add some more later. Okay. Couldn't count today. <laughs> All right. Well, that is fixed easily enough. Okay, it's this one I was working on, yes. Okay. going to do those two there and carry my strand back up. So I did leave a gap there, but it's not closed in on all four sides, so. Yes, and then that right here, switch.
dirty, dirty too. It's like a very bright pink coral almost color. I wouldn't expect that amongst all these other colors, but I'm going to trust the pattern. piece is very short. Hopefully not too short to make it work. <laughs> there might be a lot of room to maneuver. There we are. Perfect. Just long enough. I don't think I could have managed one more stitch out of that. <laughs> Oh dear, sorry guys. Oh, bonk the camera with my knee there. My apologies. <laughs> Thought I had a little more room to maneuver, but I guess I didn't. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> uh, my kiddo, he borrowed my um, camera stand. And, uh, yeah, he changed the shape of it. And I, I thought I had it back to the right one, but I guess not. <laughs> so, yeah, it's made things a little touchy. Okay, let's see. Yeah, either way, these are going to cross each other. This time I will do what I just switch back and forth for a little bit. Okay.
Okay, almost at 100, although, like I said, I did do over 30 stitches off camera before I started filming. See if I'm gonna possibly split this area up into some different threads here. I think I have some short ones, so that might actually work pretty well. So yeah, even though all of that is sort of in one, could be done with one thread, sometimes I just divide it when it seems to make sense to whoops <laughs> throwing my needle away i actually did go and buy myself one of those little uh magnet picker upper thingies yeah so is this the uh weakest one i could find was five pounds which i don't really need that but yeah it definitely means it's it's strong enough that it finds the needles quite easily if they, I accidentally flip them right out of my fingers. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to get up now. I have my little extendable magnet. Yeah, it wasn't much, just a few bucks, so I figured why not? It saves me from having to get down on my hands and knees searching with a little magnet and i find too that this magnet because it's stronger yeah i could really sweep it around and find the the missing needle more easily because yeah i had times i went over with one of these little magnets i use for taming my threads and just could not find it my husband did later thankfully not in the painful way yeah I remember when we had our roof refinished, they would just throw the nails onto your yard and then later go over with a big magnet and sweep the ground to pick them all up. Unfortunately, they did miss a few because I think they were made from a different metal that wasn't magnetic, darn it. Why are you gonna do that, huh? And, uh, yeah, our kiddo was, like, two at the time, so, yeah, we had to go looking for those to make sure he didn't get hurt on them. Oh, come on. Ah, good. There we go. We managed to get it to release.
it was a short piece, so we'll see if it stays threaded or not. It usually doesn't. But I am planning to get back to it pretty quickly, so. Sometimes I can make that work. But yeah, usually if a piece is really short, I don't bother leaving the needle on it. Because it just comes off. And I end up having to re-thread it anyway. Pierce the fabric in the right spot. Made for a wonky stitch. That's better. I'm just being picky. Probably nobody would have noticed. <laughs> Except for me. Actually, I might just leave that one aside for now. Actually, come from the bottom up again. I think that's what I'll do. So. And I'm going to split this up a bit, work part of it, and then park, and then work more of it after that. So. that didn't sound quite right. I can feel it. <laughs> Slightly shorter than it should have been for one stitch.
there. So I did that so I could do those two in a row. Did stay threaded. Yeah. And then be done with that thread at once. Oops. Rats. <laughs> One hazard of working with shorter pieces is you can get unthreaded a lot more easily. Pull just a little bit too hard. I grab the correct thread here. There's a lot of very similar blues happening here. <laughs> yeah. Grid lines do help keep me from mixing them up as easily, although it unfortunately does still happen occasionally. I work with colors long enough, no, though I get them memorized. So sometimes when I pick it up, I'll realize that, yeah, that's not the correct color. Okay, there we are. Something's not right here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another knot. Let's see if we can get it to let go or not. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, that's not looking very promising. Ah, bugger. Okay, fine. Be like that then. 
unfortunately what that means is now I have to pull back until I have enough to secure this. So, yeah. That is what I hate the most when that happens, is you end up having to undo work that you've already done, which nobody likes doing. Okay, so clear and unpark that from there. So tie this off. going to do is I'm going to fill in some stuff that will be below that anyway so nope that is the wrong color yeah, 524 is a pale green it is not a pink so I knew I should have grabbed the wrong one so do those that knot that wouldn't <laughs> still in a loop the one I had to cut out So now we want some light pink color. Now is the correct time to pick it up. envelope aside because I actually need to get a new skein of thread. If I put it back in the tub, I won't remember. Yeah. I set them aside and then the next time I get out of my chair, any envelopes that I've set aside I know need, need to get fresh hanks of thread in them. I sort of keep one in the envelope and then when I get down to the last big strand of six, then I get the next one and cut it up. Yeah, I had that in another video, but I unwind it and I fold it in half three times and then that way I end up with eight equal length pieces, which I like having. Yeah, when I used to have it on bobbins, could never seem to quite divide it up evenly. I always ended up with either a really long piece at the end or one that was a bit shorter than I would have liked. Okay, so...
since I had to restart this thread because of the knot. I'm doing it in a slightly different <laughs> way. I'm going to work from the bottom up this time for this area instead of top down. Those two strands do not want to lie side by side. Be twisty. Again, this thread is being uncooperative. Shot again. <laughs> Seem to be doing that a lot today.
I'm going to run out of thread before I run out of stitches. <laughs> Just the way it is. Can't always line up perfectly. Thought that felt funny because there's a knot in it. <laughs> there we go. This will be a color I can, yeah, pack away. Goodness. <laughs> Almost knocking things onto the floor there. one I'm gonna pack away I think this is another one yep now that I've reached the edge of the wing feathers I'll be using this color again for a while so I can take it out of the tray put them back into their envelopes
and just cooperate. Sun is trying to come out. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, kind of, it was shaped funny. I've kind of smoothed it out now, <laughs> filling it in. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of work with the threads that I have parked here in this section, and then I think that will be it for today. That'll be where I take a break. Goodness, pardon me. So yeah, this time I don't cross as I go because I want the thread to end back up at the top here. So this time I do bottom legs and then come back up to cross them. Finish these, and that will be where I'll take a break. Almost 200 stitches. I'll 
Well, like I said, I didn't start at zero. I did have, I think, 33 of them done before. Before I started filming. Oh, right, silly me. I don't have to tie that off. Now, you know what? I think in here, I forgot. I actually want to park it there. Yeah, because I don't want to have to add another one later. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here next time. All right, thanks, everyone. Bye.